Hello and welcome. We're gonna try Enemy Action Arden. Thank you for joining me at the table. Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be a few days before you're gonna see actual playthrough of this. Um, I do have the majority of today to, to try to work this out, but uh, the rules for this is quite monstrous. And this is the same speech I gave before the D-Day series of I'm quite intimidated by doing a video series of this because I feel like there's a lot of pressure to not get things wrong. And um, and so I understand why people skip games like this and don't do them. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, I, uh, I hope to, to do a decent job. And I'm, uh, anyways, enough of that. So we've been doing some Butterfield games and this one, of course, is a continuation of that. And many of you who've been watching the D-Day games have been recommending this and really wanting to see this. So uh, here we are. And um, it is quite the game. So let me uh, start off by my usual. Uh, you won't see any playthrough on this video. You will see playthrough um, at the earliest uh, video two. Uh, I'm going to try to do setup now and then um, obviously the gameplay would start on video two, but if I run into some more rules things that I forgot to cover, you might see it pushed to video three. So anyways, just look for video two, which obviously doesn't exist at this point, but um, it will soon. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, let's get started. The, so the rule book has an introduction. There's three rule books. There is, this German solo rules, and then there's the allied solo rules, and then there's another rule book that's the two-player rules. And uh, they did pull out all the stops. I mean, it's uh, there's probably a lot of duplicative information, but you can take each of these rule books by themselves without looking at any of the other ones and play a complete game without ever having to read the other rule books, which is super impressive. Um, Space Corp did a similar thing. And um, I just think, you know, because I've worked on documentation most of my life, I mean, from an editing perspective, that has got to be quite the diligent exercise. To, you got to have some pretty good people managing your documentation to get three copies that are saying similar things, but not exactly the same thing, and then keeping them all straight. Um, so very well done there. Um, so let's jump in. So the rule book says do the two player game first. Well, I don't have a second player crazy enough to play this with me. So we're gonna do a solitaire game, which is why I bought this game. And not only does it have one solitaire game, it has two. I mean, I hope the game's fun or otherwise I won't wanna do either of them. Um, but I, that's what I'm hoping for. And I'm being told that this is quite the cream of the crop. And so I'm always looking for epic solitaire games. And um, so this one uh, is definitely wetting the palate, if you will. So we'll see how this goes. Now, it recommends doing the German one instead of the Allied one first. So if you're new to this, that's what it recommended. So, first things first, there are three maps that come with the game. You can see there's a German solo game map. It's written up on the right corner. This one's real easy to tell because uh, it has all the yellow circles. So uh, very easy. Whereas if you look at the solo Allied solo game map, you can see that there's no yellow circles. It's a much cleaner, crisper map. And yes, uh, this is my table. And you can see I have the solo ally map and then the solo German map. And then if you go even further to the right, it's turned sideways, but I have the two player map all under plexiglass and one table. I do have a very large table. So um, uh, obviously you don't need to do this. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary. But uh, I did set them all up because obviously pulling up a plexiglass this big is a big effort. And uh, so I figured if I'm going to be putting one thing under there, I'm going to put all three. So now if I ever want to play any game mode, I can just sit at a different spot in the table. And all three game modes are there. They're ready for me. And uh, I can just play a game right over top of this if I wanted to. And in fact, we did with Crisis. Um, played right over top of this. So... Anyways, uh, getting back to this, 
The one thing that's unfortunate about the German solo map is that it's really hard to read compared to the other two. And I'm going to try to find an example here for you. So, like, let's look here at these hexes. Um, you can see clearly that this is 1825. That one is what? Uh, because we're smart people and we're intuitive, we can see that that's probably 1725 because this is 1825. And then you see a 26 here, and it looks like there's a 4 there. So by process of deduction, this has to be 1725. But that 1725 is really difficult to read. I hope you can agree with me on that. Well, what's this one? Well, we know it's 1624 because I see 1623 up here. I mean, you see what I mean? It's, it's not very easy to determine what these hex numbers are and you sort of have to look around it to get some frame of reference and then you, you know you can figure it out i'm not saying that it's a rocket science thing but it is pretty um pretty difficult so now let's go over to the allied map 1625 1725 yes the woods still mask it a little bit but if you'll notice the numbers are much more crisp and clear. Uh, the big thing is uh, these little triangles aren't covering them up. So the Allied map is so much easier to read uh, than the uh, German one. And so um, when we're starting our first game on the German one, it's unfortunate that we're using the less uh, or the more difficult uh, to read map. But it is what it is. And it's not like I, I can't figure it out at all. It's just, it's really hard. So the next thing I want to point out um, is that you're going to make a cup. And it's going to look like, have chips like this. And you put these in a cup, and that's no big deal. Uh, we've done that many times before with other games. But one thing that's bizarre is that this game comes with two copies of them. So when you're punching your, your chits, um, it's possible you're gonna mix them together like maybe Jeff did. <laughs> and let me just tell you that these are the biggest pain in the butts to sort out. Now, look at them. Do you see a difference between them? From far away, you can't, but if you put them next to each other, these ones are slightly darker than those ones, and they're not meant to be mixed together. This is a complete second copy of these in case these wear out. It says it right in the rule books. In case these wear out, we gave you an extra set. So I totally appreciate the extra set. I mean, that's always a nice thing. But make it a different color. Um, so it's, it's brutal when you accidentally mix these together. Please, 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 when you're punching them, it's real easy to see that they are a different color when you're punching them. And... Um, you will save yourself a lot of heartache in uh, making sure that these stay separate. And so put one in a bag and just get it out of your sight because uh, you're not going to use them uh, until these apparently wear out. So um, uh, these are obviously very important chips. They're used for resolving battles. Um, so that's the first and foremost thing I wanted to make sure we get out of the way. The next thing is there's a lot of components in this game most of which we're going to use. However, there's some w that won't be used. So uh, let me show you the ones that won't be used right away. It's these ones. So they, they have this little symbol on them with the core or the army. You can see they all have this, uh, this triangle looking symbol with a circle around it. It looks like a steering wheel. And um, these are used in the Ally solo game. They are not used in our game. So. Um, so you can put those aside. Uh, they're very important, just not needed for this particular game. The other thing that's not used is the German setup cards. So you're gonna have a whole deck of cards entitled German setup. We don't use those in this game. So those get set aside. Everything else, however, is being used. And, um, and so uh, first thing we ought to do is you have this allied action deck. Okay, so uh, you're going to take this deck and um, you need to remove the cards that say offensive action. So see how this says offensive action and that says allied action. Anything that says offensive action, you need to pull out. Those are not used yet. 
Uh, they come into the game later. I just can't remember where. I do, I do remember reading a rule on it. So uh, this um, will give you uh, 12 cards. Now, there is a uh, error on my copy of the game. Uh, that deck, by the way, the 12 cards, goes here. And if you read this, well, here we go. On day, so this is calendar days, 19 through 23. Uh, we're going to get two more cards from the other offensive deck added to this. Um, so anyways, uh, it says start with 10 cards uh, with the offensive act. I do appreciate that they wrote it right on the board. However, it's wrong. You start with 12 cards, not 10. You're removing 10 cards. That offensive action deck has 10 cards in it, not your deck. So it was um, a mistake in the English there. But anyways, you take your 12 cards and you put it right there over top. Now, here's the cool thing. The rule book does get it right. And um, I can show you real quick here. It says, remove the 10 and then shuffle the remaining 12. So it's very clear there. It's just that they made a mistake on the board. Um, okay, so next you gotta do these allied command cards. And these are going to have uh, all kinds of colors and whatnot, and we're gonna get into those when we play the game. Uh, but the important thing for setup is you're looking at this top right number, and that is the day. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. There's a calendar. So everything starts on December 16th, and the game goes until December 29th. So, so that's why you keep hearing about uh, 16, 17. You're going to see those numbers come up on cards and whatnot. These are cards that are active on December 16th, which is the first day. So you need to get all the 16 cards out, shuffle them up, and then you put them in an ally draw pile. Now, you will have a whole bunch of cards left over, and you can see that those have numbers that are not 16, but they will be added to the game later. Okay, and then uh, for German Command, uh, we have a similar situation. Uh, you're going to take cards um, that say 16 on them, just like they did. Okay, but you're going to go another step. There's primary cards, right? The primary cards are going to go into your draw pile. Well, first of all, you need this sheet. It's called German Command Card Display. And I think the other side says... Um, Allied Command. And you can see on the top left there, it says it's used in the two-player game, and it's also used in the German solo game. So these, um, these player guides or sheets try to indicate for you when they're used and when they're not. So obviously you need to use this, and so it tells you to uh, take your German commands, get the 16s out, and then the ones that say primary on the bottom, and they go here. And then you have another stack of cards, that all say 16 on them, but they don't say primary at the bottom, and they go here, like so. And then the rest of my cards I just put up there. Uh, they're not in the game yet, but I just kept them nearby. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm not done setting up um, the units on the board, uh, but you can see there's units that are uh, appearing on the board, and then there's units right on the calendar. If, you, if you're familiar with the D-Day games, uh, there were units that would arrive and try to land on the beach on certain hours or certain turns of the game. Well, this one's no different. Uh, it has units that are going to arrive on certain turns of the game. And so those are going to put, we're putting right on the calendar. And then, of course, there's units that are available from the start. And then you have things like reserve units, and you can see uh, eliminated units, and then there's an OKW reserve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what you do is you, um, um, you, you have all kinds of uh, troops, and you can see that um, I have them sorted. Uh, you sort them by the banner on the top. So this banner on the top is color-coded, and there's some pretty interesting things about it. Like, um, most of it we can ignore, but uh, like it says what the 48 means in the 12 VG in the ISS. Let me get one that's a little simpler to look at. Um, it's usually the American ones. So, um, so it tries to tell you, oh, what does it mean? 
So the first one is a, uh, it's a, it's three parts. So see how it has a left, middle, and right? So the it, this is a regiment or a brigade that's part of a division. So the first part is the regiment or the brigade. So this is the 152nd Regiment. And then uh, it's the 51st Division. And then the 30th Corps. And the Corps is always written in Roman numerals. Now, you may notice that, that some of them are in bold, and that's because of the AI cards. So um, there's, um, there's cards that you draw, and this is actually a perfect one. Uh, so it's, this card is activating the British Army 30 Corps, and oh, by the way, there's the 30th Corps, and it's black, dark, it's got a bolder font. So there's two ways that this unit will be activated. It'll be activated either by the 51st Division or the 30th Corps. And so I happened through extremely lucky draw, because uh, I didn't plan this. Uh, actually, I got two cards here that are both from the 30 core. And so um, these cards would have activated. Um, I, I, apparently, I just never shuffled these. These are out not in the game yet. And then here you can see the third army is being activated with this one. And of course, this is not the third army. So um, um, the idea here is uh, those identifiers at the top are going to be used by cards, and um, the ones that are in bold are what you really have to pay attention to. Everything else is just for historical flavor. Now, um, the other thing is, is this is uh, similar to D-Day, where you have um, the, these two little dots are pips, uh, we call them. Uh, those are, that's the, the strength of the unit. If it runs out of, if the pips go to zero, it, it's a unit that's eliminated, and you can see this is a wounded unit, and the pips went down to one. And then uh, three on the left is the combat strength, and the three on the right is the movement points. The 09 that you see in the middle is just a numerical number for uh, resolving AI. So let's say five units are going to act. Um, you would do those units in the order of the lowest to highest number or highest to lowest. The, the card tells you. And so that 09 is used to determine who goes first, second, third, etc. Then this 25 on the right that you see, that's actually where it starts. So this is a unit that will not enter the game until turn 25 or December 25th. That's what that's trying to tell you. And so we have to set up um, the game by uh, following all those things. And so uh, let me um, let me take one. This is German units. Oh, there's another important thing I want to show. This particular unit you can see is just brown all across the board. Um, and a lot of them are going to be like that. They're a solid color or they have the banner across the top. Like this one has the, uh, like almost like a burnt, burnt uh, maroon uh, banner. Um, when you uh, look at the side of the board, it shows you, uh, there's this light blue you can see here that goes up to here, and then you see this little line that comes across. That line is a, um, you're, you're going to notice that, see, that there's the same color light blue troops that are inside of that line. And these troops are actually not allowed to go north of that line. That's, that's a little crazy, but there's a certain number of turns you have to stay within the range and um, and there's other colors represented here. You can see it gets to, like, this uh, light blue line is then also overlapping with the dark gray line. See, this dark gray line starts here, and then it goes up, and hence the dark gray troops intermingled with the blue troops. And so, um, and then we get up to the top, that's a different shade of blue and gray, and, and of course those troops go up there. Now you might be saying, well, hold on, there's a lot of green troops. Well, those are Americans. <laughs> That's why they're up there. We obviously haven't put the German units on yet. But the Americans have the same thing. So if you come over here, you can see that the Americans have the purple core there. So see the, the purple? Um, and it's just in that top box. And then you can still see the wiggly line that's going across. Well, if you come straight to the right, you're going to see that there's American units with that exact same color purple banner on the top. And that's what um, you have to, to go by. And, and then you can see that the, that the Americans have several overlapping. Like there's an orange core that overlaps it, and then there's a green 
uh, what is that? That's the um, 18th core. Uh, and you can see the green 18th core has a much bigger range. And then you have this orange uh, eighth core, and then uh, it's covered up here, but, and then you have the 12th core, uh, which is down here at the bottom. And sure enough, you can see that the 12th core is, is showing up at the bottom, etc. So uh, these little lines, these squiggly lines, are actually showing boundaries. Like this one, this German one crosses this boundary. So this squiggly line doesn't impact the Germans, but if you follow this squiggly line to the left, you're gonna see that it impacts the Americans because the Americans are staying within that squiggly line. Now, <clears throat> I have not read all the rules yet, and so I can't tell you with any more clarity how that plays out in terms of game terms or how many turns in the game you have to stay. I just know that that is a boundary we have to be mindful of and, and it, it does make a difference in the early part of the game. <clears throat> so um, uh, the other thing is this here is called a west wall. So it looks like little knobbies on the, that's called a west wall and it's pretty much all along the border. And I think it represents where uh, the Germans entrenched as they were, um, you know, doing this, uh, this battle. And so that's where the Germans are entrenched. But anyways, that west wall has rules that are specific just to the west wall. And um, that's something that uh, we do need to pay attention to. And it does say here, it has a really nice um, diagram here. And it even has a nice diagram explaining what the different arrows and all that stuff means. So we're going to get into all that. But um, so when you're setting up, it's as simple as, you know, you look here and you see, okay, that says 0701. So 0701 is a particular um, spot on the board. Uh, or seven, yeah, 0701, so we need to find it now. And I see here 0601, 0702, so I'm assuming it's right there. There's gonna start, um, it, that one's not labeled, but I'm pretty sure by process of elimination that that's 0701. So that's where it would start the game. And you can notice that every one of them that are on the board have like this is 1203, and sure enough, that's on spot 1203. Now there are two exam two exceptions. Uh, one is this one, and you can see it says 1307, and then it has an asterisk next to it. It goes into the reserves, and that's per the rule book. It even tells you to find the 424th uh, Regiment, blah, blah, blah. I'm not good at citing these numbers, so... Um, it says that that one goes in a reserve box. Now, um, it has the nice a little asterisk on it to remind you. And there's one other uh, allied one. Um, the 16-1 uh, 5th Infantry Unit in Hex 0608 instead of the calendar. So, um, so what did it say that that was? That was the 5th Corps? So let me see if I have the 5th Corps still out. You know what? I may have already put that one on the board. I did, look here, see those green ones? So that's the 5th Corps. So now the question is, uh, it says that it needs to be the 16th Regiment, 1st Division. So I mistakenly ignored the rule book and put it on the calendar. So see, this is the kind of mistake you can make during setup. And so um, it's pretty easy because they have this like a uh, purple banner, right? So you're just looking for the purple banner and that's not quite it. And I'm trying to keep like the Americans and the Germans separate. And I know it's more than just Americans, I apologize. I'm gonna make that mistake a lot. Uh... Hmm. Where, oh, where did I put it? It says it's the 16th one. Here's the 18 one. And it says it's an infantry unit. Hmm. Well, I'll have to find it. <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. Um, 
It goes into hex 0608. Let me see if it's already in 0608. 606, nope, it's not out here. So I need to get that guy out. He is hide. oh, there's one hiding underneath here. There he is, there he is. Okay, so this guy had day 16 written on him. So I thought that he needed to go on the calendar, but he doesn't. He actually starts on 0608. Now, why on earth does it say that and then the rule book gives you an exception? I don't know. And, and I'm thinking it might have something to do with either in the Allied solo game, it's different, or maybe even in the two-player game, it's different. And, and that's the reason why we have these exceptions. I, I can't explain that. I've, if I had familiarity with the other two game modes, I, I, I highly suspect it has something to do with those. Um, so what I like to do is I sort them and so you can see here these ones are all going to start on a hex somewhere um, and then this one's a special one it's a VDH uh, which is a it's an interesting one it's a von der Height. I think it's some kind of HQ unit or something um, and so yeah I'm just pulling them out and you can see they all have they all have hexes on them, and you know if the hexes are the same, I'm putting them on top of each other. This is a pretty badass division here. Um, so uh, these guys, I think, are going to be putting on a world of hurt. So um, I like to sort them all out like this before I go onto the map because the map is a pain in the butt to find these hexes. Like I already explained. And then like this one here, it has the number 16 on it. So that's a, a different one. And then when you see the R, um, I'm putting the R's over here just for lack of a place to put them. These are reserve units. Uh, they're not reserve, I apologize. They're replacement. And, um, and here's the reason why they're replacement. Um, this is, well, and I, and I hate to compare things to D-Day all the time if you've never played it before, but it's a Butterfield tradition, I guess. Uh, let's say you have four pips on a unit. Well, how do you represent four pips on a unit? Well, you put four pips on it, right? And then you take damage and you flip it over and then it goes down to three pips. Well, what happens when it goes down to two pips? Well, you need a second marker, a second token. And that's what these are. These are, if you get take enough wounds and you're going down to two and one pip, then these are uh, the replacement markers. So you can see that they're all two pips or less because they represent um, a unit that's super strong and has another chip out there already in the game. So this particular one is the, uh, the first SS. You can see it's the first SS uh, Piper, I guess is what it is. And one of these is going to be a Piper unit right there, Piper. You can see it's a three, three pip unit. And then um, it goes to a two pip unit, and then the replacement is a one pip unit. See how that plays out? And then of course the unit's eliminated, so it only needs three sides. Um, okay, and then uh, 0903. So that's how I like to sort them out. And, and of course I have, every one of them have uh, trays like this. And I tried to keep them separate when I was punching the boards, and I think that was a good move. Um, here you can see 20. That just means it's going to come out on December 20th. I have not figured out what the S means yet. Um, it means something, but I'm putting it all on the 20th uh, right now. Because uh, uh, you'll see that there's other ones that will say 20 without an S. And, um, like, yeah, this is a perfect example. So here you'll see one that says 20, and this one will say 20S. So what's the difference? I don't know, um, but I'm not pretending to know. Uh, I'm just telling you that I haven't gotten to that part of the rules yet. I just know that both of these go on the 20 track of the turn. So for setup purposes, you don't need to know yet, uh, but we'll figure it out as we get into the game. And so uh, you have to do this for all the units. And as you can see, I've done some of them. Uh, I'm in the process of doing one of them right here, and then I have a bunch more to go. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do <laughs> all of these. Um, but just know that uh, setup does take a bit, and um, 
it's not the two and a half hours that Iwo Jima was because the markers are um, very clear to identify. Now, if you accidentally mix up your chits, like I talked about in the beginning of the game, those two brown sets of chits where they give you a backup set, that's going to set you back at least 30 to 40 minutes because then you have to go through every damn one of them and make sure you got an even set on left and right. Um, I cannot tell you uh, how much that would have been solved by having one be brown and the other one be yellow or something. I mean, they didn't have to be the same color. And yes, uh, when you set them side by side, one's slightly darker than the other, but I mean, come on, it was, it was just not necessary. Um, but if you save that time, then your setup won't be so bad. This doesn't take very long. You saw just with me chit-chatting with you, you could easily sort this out. And so this is 16, and so we go up to turn 16. And, you know, I'm just going to put it somewhere over there. And um, all three of these go on 0602. So the other good thing is you can see by the color that it matches the bar, right? So this stripe uh, here matches the color. So you know you're looking in this range for your hex. So it's not very hard to find the section you need to go to. And then these are 0701, which are going to go there. And then 0801, 0703. Oh, sorry about that. And then 0802. And 0902. Which is there. And then 0903 there. And you can see we got ourselves quite the build up and there's a there's a recon. Uh, American unit that's a little farther out and uh, ready to get his uh, his butt handed to him. So you can do that relatively quick. Um, the only thing special about the German ones is that the VDH is the von der Height, so you need to be mindful of that. And there's also some that say OKW on them, like this one, and uh, you can see it says OR, you know, and you're like, well, what's OR? Um, the OKW units uh, go into OKW Reserve. <clears throat> so that's what the OR stands for. It's OKW Reserve. So it's a special spot on the map board that you uh, put it off to. And um, uh, that's it. I mean, we're going to get into, like, uh, they do a really nice diagram here. Um, some of these units are just infantry. And then some are just armor. And then there's some combined arms where it's infantry and armor. And, and it's got a nice little diagram to help you. You don't need to know any of that for setup, by the way. It's just preparing you for the rest of the game. As far as uh, other markers, um, uh, you're going to have to keep all these nearby. Um, I'm trying to remember what this one is. Oh, this one's a, a destroyed bridge marker. And the other one is... Hmm. I don't remember. Um, but they got a nice little thing at the front of the rule book. It's an allied roadblock. That's what it is. And so um, you can see it right here. And yes, blown bridge. And it'll tell you what markers you need for this scenario, which is basically everything. But just to go through real quick... Um, you have a dispersed token, a low supply, and an out of supply. Those are all separate. And then way up at the top there, you can see there's an isolated, improved position, German out of fuel. There's bridge control markers, blown bridge, ownership, allied roadblock, fuel depot, German camp group, and an allied position. Uh, and that's, that's essentially it. Um, uh, like I said, it's using everything in the game except for those few things that I mentioned. Now, the setup section is on page 11. So um, the rules go through like a lot of like, what's this? What's this? How do you read this? But then you don't actually get to setup until page 11. And it's got a nice card preparation. It tells you exact numbers of cards you should have in each deck. I totally appreciate it when they do that. Because that's way, that way you know you didn't screw up the rules, right? Um... So uh, it's very handy. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios to do. Uh, there's an introductory scenario at the top, which is just December 16th. 
Um, I don't know if that's what I'm going to do or not. Um, uh, I think I want to, you know me, I like to do the big one. Let's do Battle of the Bulge, which is the whole campaign. It says it's going to take us 10 hours. Um, heck, that's half the time I spent on, uh, on Iwo Jima. Now, this is not a game where I know how to play yet, so I think it's going to take way more than 10. But, um, but anyways, uh, it even tells you which player aids you need, and uh, it's a nice rule book. I mean, just put it that way. Whether or not it's a nice reference book, once we start playing, I don't have that answer yet. But um, in terms of, like, so far, I know what I need to do. It's just I don't know the strategies or anything like that yet. Um, now, as far as the player aids go, you know, that's the thing. People do uh, unboxing videos, and they show you this stuff. And so I tend to poo-poo showing you this stuff because um, it's already in an unboxing video. But um, there's a – see on the top left it says German Solo. So you know you need to use this player aid. And it's – talk about information, right? You got – it's it's jam-packed with information from front to back. It's four pages. And then there's another one that says German Solo. And look at this one. It's jam-packed with information for four pages. I mean, this is a lot of information on those two cards. And then we're not done yet. I mean, we, got, we have this one, which is used for all games. That's a terrain one. And then if you flip this over, uh, a really nice um, summary of what the different units are. And you can see there, like... Um, how to read the, uh, the units, how to read the cards, like what does Zelda have? Um, I actually, you know, if you get, become a veteran of the game, you're never going to look at this anymore. But for a person learning the game, this is awesome. And, um, this side is, of course, the one that might be out the most. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, you need that. And then there's a, See, this one, you can see on the top left, it says it's for Allied Solo. So we don't use this, but this would be a setup card organizer. Um, and then, of course, on the other side is a Allied Command card. So I can't remember what's on the other side of that one. Uh, I don't think we use it. <laughs> but there's something on the other side of this. I just don't remember. Um, so this one, for example, is not used by us. So we don't need to have this in our, uh, in our arsenal. And um, just to... <laughs> Just to show you how how much comes with this game, um, there is one that's for just Allied Solo mode, and sure enough, look, it's another four pages of of, uh, of a million things, and then here's another one for Allied Solo, and once again, four pages, and then there's one for the two-player game, which is also four pages. Now, I'm willing to bet that some of it is repeated. Um, and that's fine. Uh, just a quick perusal ta taught me that um, uh, some of this is about the AI, right? So, for example, the solo allied one, uh, I can see a couple of the pages is dedicated to how the Germans are going to do their... So how you resolve the German uh, moves if you're playing against an AI player. Um, so, uh, so it's all pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so beyond this... Uh, what I'm going to do then is continue to do setup and and get these guys on the board or in the respective calendar. Um, I am nowhere close to being ready to start a turn, so I'm going to upload this and and maybe some of you will get excited about it. But it's going to be quite a few days before you're going to see a play from me. Uh, I don't think I can wing this game. A lot of games you'll see me wing it where it's like, oh yeah, I read a rule somewhere. And then I stop and pause and we just look it up together. I don't think I can do that with this game. And, and so I'm, I'm really struggling with that. I, I think I need to, I may need to play the introductory scenario offline before I bring this to you. Uh, but setting up the game, I felt confident that I can at least show you that much for now. And, and that's what I'm going to do from here on out is if I'm confident enough, I will, I will hit record and, and show you what I'm doing. Um, it is my intention to show you how to play and how to, and where to find things, like from a reference perspective. I did watch uh, the heavy lifting by myself, and that guy is good. I mean, I, I, I subscribe to him. Um, I don't know him personally, but uh, I thought he did a wonderful job. 
Uh, he's much better at editing and he's a lot less long-winded than me, so I'm sure there's many reasons why some of you might like him more. Um, the, uh, the thing he didn't do, though, is I still don't know how to play the game after watching his videos. Um, he stopped and he explained rules, and I got it at a high level, but he didn't explain it well enough that I could sit down and play my own game. That's the key that I'm going to try to bring, and that's how I'm going to differentiate my videos from his, because I think his videos are excellent. And um, uh, his videos are perfect for after you've read the rules, now you just want to see how it plays, right? I'm going to try to approach it from the perspective that you haven't read the rules or you're trying to and you're just falling asleep all the time or, or you glaze over because of how thick this rule book is. Um, so I'm going to try to show you how to look things up on the player guide, etc. So, um, so I don't... Uh, um, I think there's some good videos out there is what I'm trying to say. And, and so I definitely recommend that you check them out. Um, they might even be more helpful depending on what you're looking for. Um, so with that being said, uh, let's, let's do this together. And of course, I promise I will try to introduce as many, um, puns and movie references as possible. Um, the... Battle of the Bulge, of course, I know about it through my history, but I know less about this one than almost anything else. I do know there's some controversy where uh, Patton believes that he saved the day and those that were involved felt that they didn't need Patton at all. <laughs> um, and I do know that the Germans actually surprised everybody uh, quite heavily. Um, so uh, that's interesting, and beyond that, though, I don't know uh, this battle very well. I'm much more familiar with, um, uh, you know, when, when Germany overtook Paris and invaded France. I'm much more familiar with when they went through Belgium and uh, during that time than uh, here towards the end of the war. Um, it, it's also interesting because the Germans lost, and they really weren't, even though the Germans surprised the Americans, I'm not sure they really put that much of a dent into things. They may have just slowed the Americans down slightly. Um, I always find it fascinating that this battle ends up being so highlighted in war games. And maybe somebody can help me with the history behind this, but I don't think the Germans even remotely stood a chance. Like, there was nothing that they were going to come out positively with. Yet, there's so many war games that are trying to recreate this. This was like an overwhelming desperation, um, uh, don't stand a chance and never will kind of situation. And yet there's all these games that keep reenacting it and recreating it. Um, you know, something that, like, for example, the Battle of Midway really could have changed the outcome of the war. And I can totally see why Battle of Midway is wonderful to try to do. Um, even the Battle of Lady Gulf, uh, I think... If it had gone, you know, because, um, uh, what's his name? I uh, can't remember the admiral. But that admiral completely got duped by the Japanese. He took the carriers away. I mean, there were so many things that if the Japanese would have just done a few other things, they could have really devastated the American uh, forces that were surrounding the Philippines at the time. Um, those are wonderful battles because those are things, like this one... My understanding of the history of this is, yes, the Germans had panzers and the panzers rocked and, and they, did, they did create a bulge, right? They, they pushed through. But, I mean, there was nothing over here that they were going to succeed at getting. And there, was, there, was, there was thousands of troops that were still coming in and the Germans were, whatever gains they were going to get was going to be short-lived. Um, there's like nothing about this battle that interests me. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Thematically, um, it's my least favorite uh, recreation because uh, I just think it's a one-sided affair. And so we're going to play the side that, that miserably lost and, um, and, and uh, I guess try to see. Because even the, I was curious, like, what's our goal, right, if we're the Germans? Our goal is just to exit off of the edge of the map. Well, uh, that's great. I mean, there's some victory point stuff along the way, but, but I mean, one of the primary goals is just to exit off the map. Yeah, because 
even the designer himself couldn't come up with a more tangible goal because it's not like they're they're taking land. I mean, they're going to exit off the map and then and then um, after December 29th, when you get into January, they're all going to get a beat down because you know uh, Patton or whoever is going to be coming in and and with their overwhelming forces. I mean, this was not a this was not a pivotal battle. That was my long-winded way of saying this was not a pivotal battle. It was an annoyance. It was a thorn in the side. And I'm sure many people on both sides needlessly lost their lives because of this decision to have this battle. Um, American and German. Uh, the, you know, the war was essentially over by this point. And uh, it's just a sad thing. And so thematically, I don't like this battle. Um, uh, but... I'm hoping that if it's a good game, I can overcome that. <laughs> um, I'm not, you know, it's not going to ruin, uh, if this is a good solitaire game, that will not ruin it. This could have been, you know, Lord of the Rings, as far as I'm concerned. And as long as it's a, a good battle and it's a good solitaire play, uh, it could have been, you know, the planet Zimbo Bastura. Um, It doesn't matter. Um, if it's a fun game, it's a fun game. And so uh, uh, that's not going to stop me. Uh, one thing I can say is I tend to like games that are more epic in terms of, I think I like theater games more than I like tactical uh, level games. This one's more tactical, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And um, I did love Omaha Beach, so I have a feeling I'm going to like this one. And so far, so good. Uh, everything I'm reading, I am mounting in excitement over it. Um, there's some initial things like unable to read stuff that shocked me, but um, uh, that's it. I'm going to stop rambling. Um, thank you for watching. Stay awesome. And I hope to see you soon. And and not get too many of the rules wrong. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing I'm trying to understand now is how am I going to record this game uh, and keep the flow going. Because uh, there's so many things where uh, if you stop and you read the rules while you're playing, uh, you will figure it out and you'll be fine. But how can I do this and keep the flow going? Uh, that's going through my mind the whole time. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting game. The way the AI is implemented is so different than anything I've experienced before. Um, so uh, I'm very fascinated by this game and, and it's been out for a couple years now. And um, I can definitely see why uh, people talk about this one so reverently. And, um, and then I'm just floored that there's another solo game to be had with completely different rules. Or you're playing as the other side. And uh, that's just awesome sauce. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you here at the table soon.